everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, 2019 Contractor Tech Trends, How Google Helps You Use AR, VR, and Big Data Tools to Be More Efficient. I'm really excited to be your host today. My name is Jenny. Steve's here as well, and he'll be helping us out by monitoring and answering any of your questions throughout the webinar. So in case you're not as familiar with Surefire and who we are, we're located in Northern Virginia, and we help small businesses with digital marketing to drive visibility through all channels on the web so that they can continue to grow their business with ease. We're always excited to learn about new technologies as they relate to every aspect of running a home services business, and we're very happy to be able to welcome Noble to talk about augmented and virtual reality and big data today. So a few quick reminders before I pass it over to Noble. You'll get the recording of this chat on Thursday, and you can ask us questions, make comments, etc., in the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Why don't you see if you can locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. And finally, because you're on the webinar with us right now, you have a chance to win Google's VR headset, the Daydream View, and we'll be giving that away at the end of the talk, so stay tuned till the end. That's when we'll be announcing the winner. So without further ado, today we have Noble Ackerson, product strategist and Google developer expert. He's got a great presentation for you all, so with that, I will pass it on over to Noble. Take it away. Uh, thank you so much. and. Thank you to Surefire for putting this together. I'm very excited to talk to you today uh, about how home services professionals such as yourselves can augment your workers and yourselves and your business uh, with spatial continue uh, computing uh, uh, solutions for your business. Uh, but first, um, who am I? I'm a technical product manager uh, for a nonprofit in DC and I spent the last seven years working on computer vision solutions for augmented reality uh, for the enterprise uh, space and the consumer space that's small to medium size uh, businesses such as yourselves and larger organizations as well. Uh, I should qualify that though I have a Google in front of my name, I am not a Google employee. I am, however, selected to be a Google developers expert, essentially a developer evangelist uh, that uh, basically gives technical talks on various Google technologies and emerging trends on Google's dime. So before we jump right into um, a subject such as spatial computing, augmented reality, virtual reality, or mixed reality, I wanted to start by a quick definition uh, of what we mean by XR or spatial computing. Essentially, it's a mixture of the real world and virtual world so that one understands each other. This creates experiences that can't possibly happen anywhere else. And unlike there's there are differences essentially between mixed reality, virtual reality and augmented reality. And, and hopefully by the end of the day today, uh, you'll have a greater understanding of what these are and how they can posit positively impact your business. So first, uh, let's talk about augmented reality. Um, augmented reality uh, basically augments your reality visually in this context. Uh, it's a deep, deeper connection with the real world uh, that gives you additional information without breaking the laws of what you're seeing. Augmented reality is best served visually, but more and more we have solutions such as audio augmented reality as well. And it, can also be touch-based as well. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of the conversations about augmented reality can be conflated with the next uh, topic which that we'll touch upon today, which is mixed reality. And what mixed reality is, uh, is basically similar to augmented reality, but you're essentially breaking the laws of the real world, whereas augmented reality would allow you to provide context on an object or a roof or you know a widget that you are looking at mixed reality does more it actually allows you to bring new perspectives that can't be possible in the real world uh, and and we'll get into uh, a lot of this stuff and then if you look at mixed reality where you're blending uh, of virtual objects and creating almost cinematic experiences, you might wonder, then what is virtual reality, right? Uh, virtual reality uh, can be best described as taking you to a completely different world within your space. You have total immersion and you're basically lifted 
from your space uh, uh, through a headset normally uh, into a completely different experience uh, in the comfort of your own space, home, office, or, or wherever you are. When you blend three of these experiences or two of these experiences together, uh, you can do creative things for your business. Uh, in this case, this is a, an example called a holographic experience, which is a 3D um, photo uh, or video of myself doing, um, I guess, burpees or, or a workout uh, in three in virtual space, right in my kitchen, uh, and you can you can imagine how this can affect sort of marketing initiatives or sales initiatives uh, to draw people to better understand what it is uh, you're trying to pitch. All of these solutions require a lot of investment sometimes if you choose to build uh, something on your own. Uh, and we'll definitely talk about how to achieve that goal. But often with emerging technologies, you tend to run into problems with discoverability. You spend months building an app, uh, submit it to your app store or your Google Play Store, and you find out months later that uh, folks are having a hard time discovering your solution. Uh, and so you then spend more money uh, on marketing uh, initiatives on a solution that you don't know if is well proven or not. So often the frictionless approach to validating an emerging technique or setting yourself apart to delight your core audience is to consider web AR or web VR, uh, which is baked when done right in your current web presence. And it's something to consider. Uh, these are one of the many takeaways uh, that I hope uh, you'll take away today. So now getting into why augmented reality is, or spatial computing, uh, to include the spectrum that I discussed earlier, is relevant to businesses uh, such as yours. Um, I like to say the reality, the R in augmented reality or mixed reality or virtual reality is information. As I mentioned before in the definition, it's a blend of real world and digital in order to give you an experience that you or your customers an experience that you can't replicate anywhere else. Um, well, that data that you gather in the cases of augmented or mixed reality is information that helps the computer understand what's happening in the real world. And that can be very, very powerful. So to sum up the uh, the, 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 the differences between the three, think of it as a, as a spectrum, right? On the very, very left, before you get to one, <laughs> um, you have your reality as we know it. Uh, you go in, you, you get a call, you go into your customer, you look at uh, the problem you're looking to solve and, and uh, you, you know, take notes with your app or your, your phone uh, or, or your tablet or even a piece of paper. Um, which is fine. Uh, or uh, you have number one, which is augmented reality, which again, gives you context with what you're looking at. So you're looking at a refrigerator or a roof and being able to sort of capture that information in the real world to help your customers achieve a specific goal. Uh, again, mixed reality does a little bit more than that. It often abstracts the real world in order to create uh the perception of something that couldn't possibly be real happening at the same time so imagine in, in the case of entertainment uh you have um you know a video game where instead of staring at a screen or a black rectangle or your phone your walls start breaking apart and the the villain in the game starts walking through your window that is mixed reality and it it's very, very powerful in a lot of contexts. And then lastly, virtual reality, where again, if you imagine augmented reality to bring virtual worlds to your space, to blend in with the reality that you're living, virtual reality is exact opposite, where it takes you to virtual worlds while you're standing uh, in, in your current space. 
So let's bring it home for home services professionals. Um, for your line of work, uh, AR specifically uh, can be very, very powerful. It can ensure compliance on every service call that you do and help you close the skills gap between you know, junior techs that you're training and more experienced techs. It can improve customer satisfaction at, and first time fix rates before you even enter the door. Manage and helps you manage and observe multiple techs remotely so that you can sort of save money on gas uh, while you know, serving and solving real problems. It helps you reduce decision-making uh, latency for the new guy and, 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 or girl and, and the, new tech, tech, the new techs that you have on board. It helps you accelerate field tech training and knowledge transfer. And lastly, helps you reduce the tech travel costs and job escalation. Basically, it makes your customers happier. Uh, and it helps, lets you keep them uh, happier longer. So then let's jump into the use cases, why don't we? We'll get into examples of all of these. Uh, there are gonna be five of these. Uh, the first is data capture and markup, being able to, whether remotely or in person, being able to accurately capture the information that uh, represents a specific problem that you're at your site or your customer is trying to explain to you and being able to mark that up digitally and pass that to some backend database or Salesforce or CRM that you're using to capture this stuff. Next is remote expert support or what some in the industry call see what I see, being able to show um, either being the customer or your field technician to show an expert halfway across the world, what they see from their perspective at all time. Next is knowledge transfer. Uh, training and skills gap uh, uh, is a core issue where um, often you have to invest a lot in, in teaching. So you can imagine remote, the, the previous point, remote expert support helping in the transfer of knowledge with some of your veteran techs uh, with your newer junior technicians. There's maintenance and repair, uh, being able to have aided, uh, um, uh, you know, help again with the data capture and markup that you have before you enter the, the room or space uh, that you are there to help, being able to sort of reference information right there from your phone's camera or your head-worn wearables uh, um, uh, field of view. Lastly, imagining inspections that are aided with the help of computer vision, uh, being able to have the computer understand what it's seeing and help you translate that into documenting things a little bit more seamlessly. So let's get into the real reason why we're all here. We want to, I'm sure, know uh, uh, certain use cases. And, and the way this is going to go is I'm going to sort of rattle off what I just rattled off before and show you real world examples. So the first is data capture and markup. This is a tool by a company uh, in California uh, and called Daiquiri. And Daiquiri allows uh, the wearer of this device uh, to either mark certain, you know, problematic uh, um, widgets or, or, or pieces of equipment that need servicing, and those mark markers are anchored in real space. So whether they're wearing a wearable or they, um, you know, pull out their phone, at any point they're able to see what problem uh, they need to sort of uh, figure out and, and what tools to use. What's more. This information is connected to a backend database or ERP or, or CRM system so that you can record the work from the time that uh, the technician is on, on the field. That's data capture and markup. The next use case is um, what I mentioned before, the remote expert support or see what I see. See what I see became a, a common way to describe remote expert support because of uh, uh, newer head-worn wearable devices where your technician could be remote 
and they may make a call to an expert, you know, halfway across town. On a computer, they can see the perspective of the remote expert and provide assistance while their hands are free. In the case of phone-based augmented reality, you can do the same thing. So see what I see is one of the most powerful use cases that is actually in the in being used in enterprise use cases from Boeing all the way to Exxon out in the field today. And hopefully the demo gods are with me. I'm gonna show you one such company uh, that is using um, uh, remote expert support uh, to serve home services professionals such as yourselves. What you're looking at here is a company called Stream. Uh, they help home services professionals uh, to help identify, help the customer identify certain problems, digitally mark them, uh, and send that to an expert such as yourself uh, when requesting help. Uh, this company is based out of um, Austin, Texas. The third use case is knowledge transfer, team training. Uh, you can imagine uh, sort of bridging that skills gap uh, between the junior techs, as I mentioned before, and your more senior tech technologists. I'm gonna go back to Daiquiri. Uh, they make a more an enterprise solution, but this solution, and I'll show you an example of this later, is available on phone-based apps as AR experiences as well. But essentially what you're looking at here is, as I think I've hinted at a few times, as an expert out in front of a, you know, a, a thing that needs to be fixed, uh, and the device that he's wearing has a camera. He dials into an expert halfway across the uh, town or, or, or the city, and that person is able to provide uh, training on the job uh, with them. Next, we have aided maintenance and repair. So this is a common use case uh, for mixed reality and augmented reality. Uh, an example being uh, a company that I used to work for, uh, local in the Washington DC area, that uses their solution to help workers, whether they're novices or experts, to by voice and by visual capture uh, the workload or hear the workload that they need to, to do in whatever order they need to do it. This is very useful for very complex um, you know, uh, processes uh, that currently require reams of paper or an app uh, where you basically can't be hands-on with, with the work uh, because uh, obviously um, your hands are on a, a, a device uh, like a tablet. This is very powerful uh, with head-worn wearables. The last example is faster inspections. And this is something that highlights one of the strengths of augmented reality. Augmented reality is based on a couple principles. One of those is environment understanding. Being able to, with just the camera on this device or on your phone or your head-worn wearable, being able to understand the environment uh, and translate that into data or information for the computer, whether it be just taking a picture of a broken, you know, or, or damaged roof and being able to send that snapshot to a backend database for uh, a quality assurance or inspection or, or compliance reasons. Uh, that is very, uh, one of the common use cases uh, in, the, in, in the industry today. All in all, these um, solutions or use cases that I've provided um, help you interact with your customer in a way they understand. And a really quick anecdote, and I'll, I'll hand this back off to Surefire. Um, I consider myself a fix-it guy. Uh, I, I tend to want to fix everything uh, by just looking up a YouTube uh, um, how-to on it. But there's some things I probably shouldn't touch, and, and that's probably because I don't reach out to home service professionals such as yourself because I just don't know how to explain the problem that I'm dealing with, uh, or I feel embarrassed uh, to to do so. I don't know the data, the the facts about this, but I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in that. Um, a lot of customers that that you serve 
uh, have the same feeling. They they tell you their uh, their car is going, their their, their 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 boiler is doing this noise, and you have no idea what they're talking about. So being able to sort of capture these things with the power of a computer, uh, a computer uh, through the the camera or through voice, being able to augment that information, send that to you, uh, helps you make them happy even before uh, you send your text out for the call. Okay, great. Thanks, Noble. And that was a lot of really good information, but we're going to take a little water break here before he comes back with the rest of the presentation for you all. And Steve's about to launch a poll to see if you'd like to have a free consultation of your digital marketing and online presence with one of our digital marketing experts on either Wednesday or Thursday of this week. The poll is now open, so you can pick a time. Just select one of the days, or please email me to pick a time if neither of those days work for you. It's a really great opportunity to discover how partnering with a digital marketing company can make a huge improvement in your marketing efforts. And I know we have some current customers online today, and so you can all reach out to your coach and they'll be able to help you further if you have any additional questions. Okay, so we're going to get the poll closed up here and I will hand it back to Noble. Sorry, I was muted there. Great, thank you. Um, so, uh, I've talked a lot about Augmented reality. Um, next, you might be wondering, what about the other uh, thing that you talked about earlier? Um, virtual reality and how can that be used for home services? And I'd say to that, that's a very good question. Um, and so the common use cases, um, also for inspections. Um, for VR, uh, you, again, you're totally immersed, immersed uh, in, in the experience. Uh, so you don't see the real world, uh, rather you are transported to, you know, the, the a model of the types of, uh, of problems that you are most likely uh, to solve. So a lot of the use cases for VR sort of end up in sort of just preparedness and training before you go out on an inspection, if you want to sort of bridge the skills gap between a junior tech and a senior tech, you can use virtual reality to sort of show a model of the roof uh, and sort of walk them through how the common leaks uh, that they see after uh, you know a season uh, and and some of the common areas uh, that they may have with their plumbing issues uh, being able to sort of conjure up um, a couple areas that they would need to know to inspect that familiarity cognitively makes them prepared uh, to tackle problems once they get out in the field on their own um, naturally, another great use case is a way to sort of draw your uh, potential customer in uh, mar through marketing and or pre-sales recruiting, uh, conferences and, and, and the like. Uh, and you can imagine uh, being able to, you know, at your booth, being able to sort of uh, draw your customers in by describing the services or the common problems uh, that they are there to sort of reach out to you to solve. Uh, being able to sort of have an interactive experience is very, um, stays with a customer, I should say, uh, and, and, and allows you to sort of just hopefully bring in more interest uh, in order to close the sale. Training is again, uh, um, one thing that I always go to, uh, knowledge transfer. Uh, being able to um, train someone uh, without having them, without the expense of transportation or having them go out in the field, being able to sort of conjure up models of what they're gonna be dealing with in the real world um, as part of your onboarding for a new tech. Uh, one thing that is not here that could uh, that you could also consider uh, is data visualization. Um, we, we've run a industry, not we, uh, industry has run a lot of studies about sort of cognitive load and flow of uh, being able to sort of um, understand um, data a little bit better. So imagine the, you know, walking through a PowerPoint deck as we're doing right now versus being part of the, this <laughs> sounds kind of weird, actually standing right there while you sort of see the data flow around you. Um, if uh, there's an example uh, that you can pull up on YouTube uh, with a weather, um, you know, a, a weather man or woman, standing virtually in uh, the studio, but in and around them, they have the floods 
and the height of the floods to sort of give the end user uh, a perspective that they would never experience by themselves if they wanted to live. <laughs> um, you know, how high the specific flood that they were trying to translate were. And this is something that's very, very powerful if you're trying to uh, uh, understand the data uh, and, and visualize information uh, either on your team or with your customers. Next part of this is, okay, you, you, you perhaps understand the value of augmented reality or mixed reality or virtual reality. And you may be wondering, how do you sort of roll this out? Uh, in the field. I'm a big fan of evidence-based uh, approaches to uh, rolling out, especially emerging solutions and outcomes-centered approaches to validating that the, your, your experiments are working. Uh, and so with that, you can look at the different stages that I've listed out here uh, that you can sort of map to whatever metric that matters for your business. An example metric would be cost to roll out an app or buy hardware devices. So you can imagine um, starting at a stage where you just wanna prototype something and just test it out or just find something off the shelf, and limit the, uh, the cost of, of sort of entering a new space. Um, from that prototype, you may move into a proof of concept because you played around with it. You were convinced that there was a problem to solve. So you may sort of jump right in, and try it with a subset of your users through a pilot. And if there is value and you see some outcomes that are positive, that hit the return on your investment, then hopefully you have a little bit more funding to get into the, the fourth and the, or the fifth stages, which is either you know, a project that, you know, will drive value for your customers and drive revenue for your business. And then obviously scale it out uh, if it works, double down on what works and cut out what doesn't. And to do that on the cost, you naturally be wondering, we need devices. So here I'm gonna talk about a couple of devices that currently in this market uh, can help you achieve your dreams of augmented virtual reality. The first is actually quite obvious. Uh, most of your customers and yourselves have supercomputers in their pockets. Uh, the iPhones and compatible Android devices all support um, augmented reality. And so Apple um, supports something called ARKit, uh, which allows software developers to do uh, very complex and impressive experiences right from the phone's camera. And similarly, Google um, does the same thing uh, with their uh, partner devices. And in this space, you may want to look at something in the prototype phase, or if it works, you can actually roll it out as a full-on production application at scale. Next are heads-up displays. Uh, there's a common misconception that Google Glass is a augmented reality device. It's actually a HUD, it's actually a heads up display that provides information within your field of view, like notifications uh, or contextual information that are relevant, timely, uh, time bound and, 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 and provide your contact, provide you context with what you're looking at. This can also be rolled up anywhere from the pilot phase uh, to production phase. And I'm saying pilot mostly because of the cost associated to be developing for Google Glass or devices like it. And actually getting your hands on a Google Glass device, uh, you need to be, uh, you need to go through a, a pretty, uh, you know, laborious process today. Uh, and, and it's available to larger organizations. Uh, and, and I can provide links to, to how to do that. Next is sort of, the next generation, again, Vuzix, this is a device called a Vuzix Blade. Also technically a heads up, uh, I'm sorry, a heads up display, but has augmented reality capable features. They don't like me saying this, and this I say this the same thing for Google Glass. This is essentially a, a smartphone miniaturized on your face. Uh, because if your phone can do augmented reality, then surely enough, 
without having to hold a phone in your hands and being able to measureize it in a pretty sleek looking, I'd say, uh, um, a setup here. You can do this, and given the cost and co cost of sort of developing the software and the cost of the hardware, you may want to consider this when you actually have a project that is validated either with your cell phone um, application. It is actually cheaper then to port that cell phone application to a heads-up uh, device uh, or an AR-capable head-worn device like the Vuzix Blade. And in case you're wondering with the Vuzik Blade uh, and the Google Glass device, for those who have uh, prescription needs, uh, you can actually outfit those with uh, prescription lenses as well. Now we get into the big leagues. Uh, this is mixed reality devices. Uh, Microsoft recently announced uh, that they're going to be launching this year uh, something called the HoloLens 2. You're, what you're looking at here is a HoloLens 1 device. Uh, the cost of the hardware is not nominal. It, it is quite expensive, uh, but more it is very the developer talent um, to to develop for devices like these um, could be costly uh, because they have to design for this medium and understand that uh, safety is of the essence uh, with devices like this. So they're not just building apps for you, but they're also designing experiences to keep humans safe. Um, and, and, and so I would dump this into the project mode. You've got a lot of investment. You've proven that this works. And you want to sort of see whether this can scale and set yourself apart uh, from your competitors. So this is mixed reality, where you're blending and breaking the rules of reality with your uh, solution. But what if you wanted to escape the world or train something where you're totally immersed? I would say this may look silly if you've never heard of Google Cardboard, but using the power of your cell phone, Google decided to make available this cardboard device, uh, and it's just foldable, uh, where you fold it in place. They're relatively cheap. You can find them for 15 bucks to 35 bucks. If you want to brand them, it's probably on the top end of that. But you can send these to your customers to market or do some pre-sales things at conferences. They take out their phones if they have a cardboard compatible device on Android or and or iOS and launch your app uh, right there without any need for any hardware, a $25, $35 device. So you can use this in prototype mode and depending on your goals, you can also use this in production. On the VR end, there's also, also standalone VR devices. So where Google's approach to requiring your cell phone to experience very low end three depth, you know, depth of field that was just your head looking around and experiencing something unique. Uh, Facebook's Oculus uh, and HTC, HTC's Vive decided to take this a different route. What you're looking at is essentially the guts of a cell phone without the need of tethering to a computer, um, basically to experience the same thing you would uh, again, without the need of sort of pulling out a phone. So you preload the app or make your software available on Oculus's um, app store. And right there, you can point your your um, your customers to that app that app and and they can download it right there within their experience. You can use this at the project phases, again, due to cost of hardware and cost of developing for this medium. Now, uh, we get into when we're really rocking. Uh, this is uh, PC-based virtual reality devices. And the newer devices um, uh, require just your end user or your, your, your team being trained. Just slap this device on there, tether it to a computer. Uh, so you may have a limited uh, um, uh, motion. However, you can walk around the virtual space, uh, assuming hopefully you have a lot of space in, in that you're using, and they can actually experience uh, what it's like uh, to uh, be on top of a you know a 60 foot building uh, and and sort of fix a, a broken you know pane of glass or whatever it is uh, you're trying to sort of demonstrate. Again, depending on your goals. 
uh, the cost of the hardware and the cost of uh, developing, uh, you know, immersive experiences such as the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. Uh, uh, you may want to sort of think about this in the project phase or when you're ready to scale. But all these examples that I provided uh, require you to, you know, invest in building your own app. And as I said at the top of this presentation, that's um, that's not cheap, uh, right? Uh, so here uh, for you are available solutions today uh, that can help you talk, uh, can help you experience or help your customers experience uh, all those use cases that I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, so for the remote expert support or what I like to call see what I see, there is a app called Chalk available on the iOS and the Android Play, uh, Play stores or the Google Play stores, they call it. And Chalk is, is built by one of the industry leaders in augmented reality, a company called Vuforia. Uh, they are able to, you know, your customer is able to uh, show you the problem that they have looking at a broken microwave or whatever it is. Um, and you can, what we call telestrate, basically draw on your computer or on your phone, and they see what they need to switch on or switch off uh, remotely uh, without the added cost of you know, sending a technician every time. So you can imagine the added benefit uh, and the cost savings of a simple solution uh, like this. And I should mention, Chalk is free to try. Uh, all your customer needs is your their email uh, and your email, and they can connect you, and it's available in the Play Store. However, they do offer an enterprise version uh, that if this works and you would like to sort of try it out, uh, you can definitely try it. The next is home improvement uh, uh, solutions uh, by a company called House. Uh, they're one of many in this space, being able to sell, help your customers sort of rearrange furniture or, uh, you know, see how large a um, refrigerator is going to be or whatever it is, uh, the engine of a part uh, uh, is going to be before uh, they commit, uh, you can use House. I should also mention, uh, honorable mention, IKEA. If your customer insists they want to use IKEA, IKEA does an excellent job uh, with their augmented reality app, uh, also available on the iOS and Android store uh, to sort of help you with home improvement. Um, another honorable mention in the home improvement space will be uh, none, other than, none other than Amazon. Believe it or not, if you have the Amazon app on your phone, uh, there's a little camera in the search section and it has AR features a lot of people don't realize. Speaking of, speaking of um, apps on your phone, perhaps already, if you have a, a newer phone, is Google Lens. Uh, and so being able to sort of point a newer phone uh, just by opening the camera, just the regular camera that you, we use every day. Uh, if you have a Pixel 2 or 3 or one of their newer Samsung devices uh, with Google Lens turned on, you can actually sort of see a serial number or a QR code, point your camera to it and get context or information for that. Uh, this is a very powerful app using computer vision and artificial intelligence because you're able actually to point at things that uh, you would traditionally ask someone uh, and it'd be able to interpret that, uh, like just looking at a picture of um, you know, a plant and being able to tell you what type of plant it is, whether it's poisonous or not. This is available today, uh, loaded on a lot of phones, a lot of people uh, don't realize. Um, one thing that I certainly can't live without when it comes to my attempts, as, as I mentioned before, I'm horrible at home improvement, but I like to believe that I'm an expert. Um, uh, one thing that I live and die by, uh, or I, I, I would swear by, is my measure app on my phone. Um, being able to sort of measure uh, using uh, a, uh, iOS measure kit on my Apple device or on my Google device, uh, just something called measure, uh, AR core uh, measure uh, on the uh, Google devices uh, like Samsung, LG, and all the Android phones you can actually sort of just get a sense of depth. And I use this all the time. I have a uh, shed out back. Uh, there was a deal at Home Depot. 
Uh, I went to Home Depot. I measured it uh, with this measure app. I came home, looked at my backyard and knew I could fit it in, put it together. And uh, it was one to one. Um, it's very, very impressive. These uh, solutions uh, can be just pilot or sometimes even production. You may choose that these solutions are all you may need uh, to execute on whatever goals that you have as a business. I should mention that a lot of these tools are proprietary, right? So naturally, uh, in order to interface with your backend databases or CRMs, uh, you would have to sort of either build a bridge between or partnership between the app maker and yourself or build something yourself. Oh, this is an example. I was so excited about the measure feature because I use it all the time. This is an example of the measure app. Uh, you can see if uh, you see my mouse, it's a blue line that has a 33.9 thing. I'm using my camera being able to sort of measure the length and the depth of something uh, in uh, um, virtual space uh, and sort of mapping that to the real world in order to you know, get an accurate assessment of the space that I have. Now, you can say, yes, you can use uh, your, you know, a regular tape measure for this, which you can, but you can't store this digitally unless you sort of pen it down or type that me measurement inside. So this is more time saving uh, value add uh, for um, uh, AR, VR, or actually more AR or MR. So let's wrap this up. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm good on time. Uh, let's um, wrap this up by saying, Hopefully I've demonstrated uh, the key takeaway uh, here is that when you blend, you know, the computer uh, through computer vision, your camera and your reality, uh, you can derive a lot of value and data or information for your business if done right. Before you do so and jump into these emerging waters, uh, I would advise that you identify your goals and your objectives first. What do you want to achieve? with this new emerging tech. Once you have sort of set down the path, maybe your goal is to be a differentiator in the market, to provide an additive experience that your competitors cannot replicate. You apply those, I and this is an opinionated bullet point, I think you should apply those to your objectives to existing use cases first. Some of the use cases that I talked about earlier, master that, and then enter the world of you know really unique delighters and use cases that aren't really thought of that additive experience to existing use cases is a, a you know a, a de-risking approach because you can sort of say to yourself that this is a solution that has already been proven uh to work for either a specific industry uh that i can replicate uh to differentiate myself myself uh, by creating value uh, in new ways for my customers. Use the right tool or solution for the job uh, is the next uh, takeaway there. Uh, and that pretty much says what it what I mean to say there. Uh, but it also means um, if you just want to sort of uh, provide a draw or marketing solution, perhaps look at more VR based solution. If you just want to test something out and you're just at the pilot stage, Perhaps consider doing, uh, looking at web AR solutions or web VR solutions, or um, look for something off the shelf just to prove uh, um, and, and sort of measure and test uh, and make sure uh, uh, you're doing the right thing. And to that, I'll say scale your rollouts um, from prototype to production. Uh, pick, a, 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 you know, pick a place uh, that you feel the maturity of your solution might be. Uh, you may already have a mobile app uh, and you just want to add something additive. Uh, you want to provide something additive to that experience. Uh, perhaps then that might be in, you know, past the prototype stage. It might be in the pilot or it might be in the project stage. But make sure you, you, you are aware of what your objectives and goals are and apply that to where you land in rolling out your solution. Hinted at this a few times. Um, measure, test, learn, do it all over again. Drop what doesn't work. Be iterative uh, in that sense and double down on what works. Um, a little repetitive, but um, use the right hardware for the job. Uh, there's no need to go HoloLens and bring in virtual uh, um, objects into your space through mixed reality 
if what you really want to do is just provide markers and context with previous uh, fixes to jobs that you uh, may have uh, undertaken. So that's it. Um, if you really liked this uh, presentation, I'm I can be found on uh, Twitter uh, at Noble Ackerson. Uh, I'm going to be working on putting a lot of this content, um, different variations of uh, complexity, and uh, if you want the 101 version or the intermediate versions to uh, AR or even more how to build these solutions yourself, I'll be putting that on my YouTube, and I can be found at youtube.com slash C slash Noble Ackerson. And that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Noble. And I want to thank everyone else, too. But before we finish up today, I want to ask again if you'd like to have a free consultation of your online presence and your digital marketing with one of our experts on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. The poll's open again, so if you didn't get a chance to answer the first poll, now's your chance. Select one of the days or please email me to pick a time if those days don't work for you. And while we're all answering the poll, I want to announce our winner of the Google Daydream View. And our winner today is Stacy Carter. Congratulations, Stacy. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address, and we'll get that shipped right out to you. Okay, we're going to get the poll closed up. And I want to say a huge thanks again to Noble and to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us. And I really hope you learned something new. I know I did. And I look forward to seeing you online at our future webinars. Please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end. Let us know how we did today and if there are any topics that you'd like to hear about in the future. We'd love to check out the topics you suggest when we plan our webinar schedule. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.